Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As in any war, the informational war is uh, sometimes as important as the actual fighting. And that is because uh, with information and country information you can um, change the course of, uh, of the whole fight. In this case, um, you know that, probably you know that, that um, great uh, news of the Ukrainian counteroffensive was issued yesterday. There is uh, the Ukrainian army started its counteroffensive and uh, they uh, claim or report some successes. Now, all this uh, counteroffensive uh, seems to uh, focus on Kherson. And I have a few articles and I will put them together in one video about the Ukrainian um, counteroffensive in Kherson. Now this article comes from Republic World from today, August 30th. This is the title, Eyes on Kherson, as Ukraine claims bold move on Russians. A surge in fighting on the southern front line and a Ukrainian claim of new attacks on Russian position fed speculation Tuesday that a long-expected counteroffensive to try to turn the tide of war has started. Well, they actually all claim it. They also stated that the first phase started of the counteroffensive with their bombardments of the Russian um, supply lines and their um, ammunition depots behind uh, the Russian um, forces. They said this was the first step and now the second one is attacking the Russian forces and therefore the Russians will be depleted of uh, probably reinforcements, I mean, personnel or um, ammunition and uh, weapons. So it says here that um, officials in Kiev though warned against excessive optimism in a war that has been similar has seen similar expectations of changing fortunes before. So you don't want to jump with both feet on this because it might be a uh, slippery or uh, shifty ground and you might fall on your butt and then what? It's going to boost the morale of the other side and uh, will lower the morale on your side. Therefore you don't say, oh we're there, we're gonna, now this is it. Because if this is it and you have some moderate or more mild initial success, then if you are blocked and pushed back, that would be a great or a massive defeat morally and uh, that could be a, an entire army could fall. So that's why they're like, oh, we started it, but it's a different one. We have success, but oh, it's not a counteroffensive yet. We'll see. So. Even though independent verification of battlefield moves have be, has been extremely t tough, the British Defense Ministry said in an intelligence report that as of early Monday, and I'm quoting, several brigades of the Ukrainian armed forces increased the weight of artillery fires in frontline sectors across southern Ukraine. Attention uh, centered on potential damage Ukraine might have inflicted on Russian positions around the city of Kherson, a major economic hub close to the Black Sea and one of the Moscow's prized possessions since it started the invasion just over half a year ago. They said that the Ukrainians uh, reported yesterday that they were able to break through the first uh, line of defense of the Russians in that area. Ukraine's president uh, office reported presidential office reported Tuesday that powerful explosions continued during the day and night in the Kherson region. Tough battles are ongoing, particularly across all of the strategic area. Well, Ukrainian forces, the report said, have destroyed a number of ammunition depots in the region and all large bridge across the Dnieper that are vital to bringing supplies to the Russian troops. Russian state news task reported Fire explosion rocking uh, Kherson on Tuesday morning, blast likely caused by air defense systems at work. The Ukrainian Military Operation Command South also reported destroying a pontoon crossing the, Dn the Dnieper that the Russian forces were uh, setting up and hitting a dozen command posts in several areas of the Kherson region with artillery fire. And I'm quoting, the most important thing is Ukrainian artillery. Ar artillery works 
on the bridges, which the Russian military can no longer use. Ukrainian independent military an analyst Oleg Zadanov told the Associated Press, and I'm quoting, even the barges have been destroyed. The Russians can't sustain forces near Kherson. This is the most important. Well, um, what if they're on the other side of the Dnieper? You push them over there, then it's you who need to cross and attack the Russians in your counteroffensive. So then you make it much, much harder for you by destroying all those bridges. Um, well, what do I know, right? On Monday, the Southern Command Center's Natalia Gumenyuk told Ukrainian news outlet Liga Net that Kiev's forces have launched offensive operations in many directions in our area of responsibility and have breached the enemy's first line of defense, end quote. The statement quickly made headlines after weeks of reports that uh, Ukraine forces were preparing an offensive there and as Ukrainian attacks on the Kherson region int intensified. Zadanov said that Russia, that Russia has been has three lines of defense in Kherson region and breaching the first one signals one isolated offensive action by the Ukrainian army. The war has grown to a, st uh, has grown to a stalemate, over, stalemate over the past months with casualties ri rising and the local population bearing the brunt of suffering during rel relentless shelling in the area. Um, well, amid fears that uh, now we talk about Zaporozhye. Zaporozhye is doing all right. These guys are just bombing uh, over there, so they scare everybody. They being the Ukrainians, I think. And the Russians have military around to protect the plant, which I think uh, should, but the Ukrainians want it back, so they attack these guys. Now, another, um, another article that I have here is Ukrainian military destroys Russian crossing in Kherson. That comes from the new voice of Ukraine today, August 30th. Um, and then uh, this is the, the situation, but this is what the Russians respond. The Russians, Russia is moving military convoys from Crimea to Kherson. So they try to reinforce their uh, defense if that's true, or maybe they will be in an offensive. The enemy, which is the, this comes from the Ukraine form, the same date. The enemy is forming a large convoys of military vehicles in Crimea and sending them towards the Kherson region, with Ukrainian forces striking bridges so this equipment does not get closer to the front line. So the Russians are forming large columns of equipment in Crimea and sending them towards the front. It's important to make sure that this equipment is not moved to the front line. And here we are watching strikes on the Antinivka bridge again. In a comment to Ukraine Channel 24, he being um, uh, Serhi Klan, deputy of the Kherson Regional Council, noted that it is very important to adjust transport routes so that the equipment is not transferred to the right bank of the Dnieper River, river and let the columns only appear in the field of the view of HIMARS and the occupiers will have another Brilivka clan road. So, um, as I always say, there's no smoke without fire. Um, now, uh, I don't know if all these things are accurate. I'm just reporting what uh, there's three channels which are all on the Ukrainian side. Three sources say and uh, something has happened, obviously, and they declared that well, the counteroffensive started and they breached the first line of defense in one of these areas. We'll see how, uh, how sustainable that these attacks will be. Um, I, if I were to make a prediction, and I will make one, I think this is going to be just like a little, little um, summer rain, about 20 minutes, and then everything would come back um, as before which is stalemate and probably the Russians are going to again steadily moving towards east. But we'll find out, right, if they allow us to stay alive by then. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.